I'd now like to introduce Evan Walker from Transport New South Wales, and he works for the Centre for Road Safety. There's a lot of science behind road crashes, and he's going to take you through some of the science that actually leads to the crashes, that, one of the examples that you saw today. So please welcome Evan Walker. I see you rolling round town in the wrong direction, taking a selfie with a filter hot in your complexion. You be all scrolling through that Tinder looking for affection. The way you drive it ain't no wonder you just get rejection. This is a section for your reflection to make the connection to your personal protection. Cause I be rocking Bluetooth even when I park it. I got this white gold hands reset at Peggy's Hello everybody, uh, how are you feeling after lunch, good? Okay, hi, my name's Evan Walker, I'm from the New South Wales Centre for Road Safety. Uh, quickly, a bit about myself, I'm from a place called Cronulla, which is in the Shire in Sydney. Um, I like to surf when I can, I was in the water just a couple hours before this, so I wasn't late, but I was pretty close to time. Um, and you know, I think I'll start with a picture of me at work. So here I am. Um, I'm not getting arrested by the police. We work really closely at the centre with the New South Wales Police Force. I'm trying to do things um, to keep everyone safe on the road. Now, as you saw this morning, emergency services and police are the front line of road safety when everything goes wrong. Um, you would have seen the consequences of a crash in uh, that little piece you saw this morning. But the first thing I want to talk to you about is how the choice of car you, you buy at the start can make a big difference to uh, whether you survive or how injured you might be in a crash. And I want to do this by showing you a crash test of two cars. Um, one of them is a red Mitsubishi Lancer and one's a silver Holden Cruze. And before I show you that, I might ask you guys to tell me which one you think would be the safest. So uh, let me hear it for the Lancer. Okay, okay, that's cool. Red cars are kind of popular. Um, how about the Holden Cruise, the silver car? All right. Okay, let's take a look. Um, both of these cars, they're under $10,000. They're about the same price, but there is a big difference. Okay, let's take uh, a couple close-ups. So that's a cruise. Okay, and this is a Lancer. I might just walk over there and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so what you've seen in those crashes, it was only 60 k's an hour, so not a very high speed. Um, let's have a look at the, the cruise and see what kind of damage was done. So if you look at the outside of the car, they look pretty similar. But when you look inside the cruise, you can see that the airbag went off, but pretty much the whole driver compartment's intact. So if you're sitting in this car, more than likely you'd, you'd walk away from this, maybe with some whiplash, but not a severe injury. If we go over here and we look at uh, the Lancer, um, yeah, this really isn't good at all. Um, what you can see is the dashboard's moved all the way into the seat. Um, the steering wheel's probably where your stomach would be. If you're in this car, you would have um, broken both your legs at least, and you'd be trapped in there maybe for an hour or two because they couldn't just simply peel the doors off. They'd have to remove the whole dash, and if you had an internal injury, that could be a fatal crash for you. So there's a massive difference in, in between the safety of these two cars. They're all the same price. So how do you know when you're going out to buy a car, um, how, do, how do you know which one's going to be safer? Well, what we have is 
something called a used car safety rating scheme. So you can look at that up on the web. Um, as it happens, the cruise is a five star, but the Lancer's only a two star, and there's such a big safety difference between the two. So if you're out buying a car, or you're gonna drive another car that your family might have, check out the safety rating. It can make a massive difference. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is seat belts. Now, you saw in the crash this morning that one of the passengers didn't have a seat belt. They, they didn't have a great outcome. And really, you could be in the cruise, you could be in the safest car imaginable, but if you're not wearing a seat belt, all that extra safety is worthless. Let me show you why. Okay, so again, that's a crash at only 60 k's an hour. And what you've seen is that two passengers on this side of the car, on the, the video side, they weren't wearing seatbelts. Um, both of them would have suffered severe injuries. But what's even uh, most alarming is if, if the back passenger, not restrained, not only did they hurt themselves, but they went all the way through the car and headbutted the rear head or the back of the head of the front passenger. So, not only would they be injured, but they'd have to walk away with the knowledge that they'd really injured the person sitting in the front who might have been wearing a seatbelt and doing the right thing. So wearing a seatbelt is so critical, but unfortunately, 17% of young people killed on our roads every year aren't wearing one. So that's dozens of young people killed each year just because simply they didn't put a seatbelt on. It's not only just about wearing a seatbelt, but it's how you wear it. So if you're in the front seats and your seat's too reclined, you know, you're kicking back, you'll go straight under the seat belt and hit the dash. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is speed. So we talk about speed a lot in road safety. We put speed cameras out everywhere. Um, the police enforce speeding a lot, but there's a real good reason for it. That's because every five, every 10 k's makes a huge difference to the amount of energy in a crash, the likelihood you'll have a crash and what the outcomes will be. Um, typically, on a country road, you could drive 90 k's an hour as a young license holder. In city areas, you're driving 50, 60 k's an hour. And what we've done to uh, demonstrate the difference is we've got a cr two crashes, um, one with a car traveling at 100 and one with a car traveling at 60. So let's have a look at the crash difference. So 60 k's an hour in a reasonably safe car, similar to the cruise, um, it's still a really big impact, but it is survivable. Okay, so that's the effect of a crash at 100 k's an hour. Now, in a city, in an urban area, we have 50, 60 k speed limits because there's lots of things for you to hit. Um, so traveling much more than that, you know, it's not a good thing. But if you just happen to be driving on a country road, even one minor mistake or one minor crash will have massively severe outcomes, as you can see from that, that demonstration. Um, but it's not just about you as a driver speeding. If you're a passenger in a car and the driver's speeding, what should you do? You should speak up. You should tell them to slow down. And it's, you know, it's about your safety, but it's about the safety of everyone else on the road, a pedestrian up ahead, perhaps. And we think this is a really, really important safety issue. And what we've done is we've put a little video together that we've got on YouTube um, that tries to demonstrate that. Let's have a look. Sorry I'm late. Come on then, get in. 
What happened? Just got held up at work, man, as per usual. It's all right, though. We've still got 10 minutes till kickoff. So how are you anyway, man? You pumped for the game? Yeah. This is it. This is the big one. Bad choice. You can't predict what's ahead, and speeding increases the risk of crashing. So speak up and tell the driver to slow down. If you don't, you may never get a second chance to. Hey, take it easy. Sorry, man, that was a bit fast. <laughs> Sorry. Good choice. You can't predict what's ahead, and speeding increases the risk of crashing. If you're in a speeding car, Speak up and tell the driver to slow down. If you don't, you may never get a second chance to. Okay, so thank, thank you for that. Look, um, five or 10 Ks, that's the only difference between those two scenarios. It can make a huge difference because other people do make mistakes on the road. Um, and just that little bit of difference in traveling speed can have a significant outcome. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are a couple other things that are, affect the way you drive. Um, we've got things like mobile phones, drink driving, uh, drug driving, and driving fatigue or driving tired that Morgan talked about earlier today. Now, you might be looking at that, uh, the photo up there and wondering why I'm showing you a picture of a blue bit of plastic on a big tongue. Well, that's, that's all about roadside drug testing. So it's a relatively new thing that we do in New South Wales. Um, the police are out there at the moment doing a lot of it. What it involves is them breath testing you. If you're not positive to a breath test, then they might pull out a drug test, which involves scraping that little blue device across your tongue. And what it does is it, it shows them exactly what you've been doing. And drugs stay in your system maybe for a few hours, so anything from a few hours to a few days. Roadside drug testing is, is a big thing that we're introduced but it's to deal with a really significant road safety issue um, with almost 16% of fatal crashes involving a driver with drugs in their system. Now, as you saw earlier, I showed you to get your hand off a video. Um, you know, that's a, you know, it's a nice video. It's pretty interesting. It's quite funny at times, but it's a serious issue. The key thing about mobile phones is if you stop to read a text message or send a text, it can take you, you know, two to 30 seconds, it'll take your eyes off the road, and a lot can happen in that time. Like those pedestrians could have stepped out, as you saw in that video before. Heaps of things can happen, and there's lots of crashes happening because basically everyone's kind of addicted to their phone at the moment, and it's something we really need to try and address. And there's, how many people have got someone next to them looking at their phone? Hands up. There you go. Well, you're not driving a car, but still, see what I mean? People just can't keep their hand off it. Now, the last issue I really wanted to talk about in this space was uh, drink driving. Um, drink driving's been an issue for a long time. In 1981, we introduced uh, random breath testing. And there's over six million random breath tests conducted each year in New South Wales. So if you're a young driver with a zero blood alcohol limit and you do drink drive, you will get caught. Um, and here's a quick look at the last 30 years of roadside breath testing or random breath testing in New South Wales.
your chances of being random breath tested are one in three. Head on collision with a drunk driver. And his mother was killed. It's called mobile RBT. Do you want me to drive? No. I've had half a bottle of wine and two beers. I'm as right as rain. It's between <laughs> stopping here and stopping here. RBT and mobile RBT, keeping people safe. Getting caught is only a matter of time. If you drink, then drive. You're a bloody idiot. I killed my brother. <laughs> Sir, you're now under arrest. It's not bad luck. It's a crime. Go to bed, Jessica. You have been charged with driving in a manner dangerous, occasioning death. But if something goes wrong, you're gone. means you need a plan B. Okay. So what's good to know is that video ended with 70 lives uh, lost from road, um, drink driving related fatalities in 2011. Last year it was only 50. So the current campaign is still working hard to give us great results. 50 is too many. The last thing I really want to talk about is something positive. It's about what you guys can do to help make yourselves a safer driver on the road. Now, we've got a new course. It's called the Safer Drivers course. Uh, it's designed for learners, people who've done their first 50 hours of uh, supervised driving. The course will teach you things that your parents or your other supervisors probably don't know how to, about rate, making the right choices uh, when you're in those everyday situations where you might I'll be tempted to take a risk or you're running late, you might want to go that little bit faster. It also um, helps you understand things like safe following distances and other great concepts. Now we think the course is fantastic um, and recently we put some of the young GWS Giants plays through the course. They're all your age, uh, let's see what they thought of it. Hi, my name's Pat. My name's Connor. I'm Alex Johnston. I'm Billy Lambert. My name's James Monks. So I'm 17 and I can't wait to take advantage of the 20 hours that the driving course is going to give me. So whenever we're driving, we're always trying to bring those things that are outside of our control inside our circle of control. So you've been out with your friends and they're all really pushing you for a lift home. So what are the risks in the scenario? Uh, you're tired because it's late night. Yeah. Uh, distractions on the road. Just so looking around who's doing what. See this car's coming in front of us, it's behind you. He's quite anxious, isn't he, this guy behind you? So people try and manage to do a whole heap of things when they're driving. So they're not just focused on their driving. What they're doing is they're, they're getting themselves quite scattered. It's hard for our brain to sort of focus on everything, yeah? You're almost taking a step back, trying to track everything and get stuff out of your peripheral visions. The more things we try and do when we drive, the harder it becomes. Nicely down here, three second gap. That's what we're looking for. So all the time we're reading, we're seeing what's happening, we're following, looking at what other cars on the road are doing, what the hazards, what hazards are around, and that changes every scene that we go through, every street.
Okay, so there it is, the Safer Drivers course. Um, not only will it make you a safer driver, but it'll also give you a 20 hour logbook credit uh, when you're learning. So that's a great incentive to take it up. Um, that's it from me today, so thanks for tuning in. And uh, always look out for yourself and look out for your mates when you're on the road. Thank you.